Elon Musk is uh, advancing his Neuralink technology, the stuff that's gonna connect to people's heads. And this is the best part. Thousands of people have expressed interest in receiving Elon Musk's Neuralink latched to the side of their head and connected to their brain. Yes, they are. These are brain implants. And according to a recent Bloomberg report from uh, one of Elon Musk's biographers, Ashley Vance, this is moving forward. Neuralink, uh, Musk co-founded this in 2016 has yet to implant its device in any humans, but it aims to operate on 11 people next year in over 22,000 by 2030. And he's visited the company's facilities 10 times over the course of these three years to figure this whole thing out. So this is what's going on now as he's gotten to this new threshold. Earlier this year, the US Food and Drug Administration gave Neuralink, they gave Neuralink approval to launch human trials of its device, which Musk has described as a Fitbit in your skull. Okay, the FDA had previously rejected Neuralink's bid for human testing in March, is what Reuters reported, citing safety concerns, including that the wires connected to the brain, uh, the brain chip, could move around within the subject's head, or that the chip could potentially overheat. So this is what the surgery looks like. Musk biography said that it takes a couple of hours for a surgeon to perform the craniectomy. Craniectomy. I looked it up and I'm telling you, I still pronounce it wrong. Craniectomy. Uh, and then about 25 minutes for the robot to insert the actual device, along with its ultra thin array of about 64 different threads. The device will replace the portion of the skull that had been removed. Vance, uh, his assist, uh, the person who works with him, said that the threads are so thin, they're about 1/14th the width of a single strand of human hair. And this is what it would look like behind your ear. And wrapped up into your brain, just saying. So, uh, by the way, that whole tech, the whole surgery of removing that piece from of your brain, uh, sorry, your skull from behind your ear, and implanting the device in that same open space, <laughs> it, I guess it's appealing. So, okay, um, this is what the folks that are looking to to be one of the uh, uh, one of the guinea pigs on this, uh, they want to help them out. So, in September, the company began recruiting for its very first human trial. Neuralink said in a blog post that it was looking for people who had paralysis in all four limbs due to a spinal cord injury or ALS. And in just one step of the course, and the next one uh, is that he would give it to everyone, not just folks who suffer from these conditions. The company eventually hopes to make a device that would create a sort of symbiosis, symbiosis between humans and machines and would allow people to send messages or play games using only their thoughts. But the first company, uh, first the company aims to help people with neurological disorders. Which, by the way, okay, Trey, I get it. Actually, that's um, admirable. You want to help mm-hmm. folks that uh, you know we have technology that comes to help people walk. Mm-hmm. I remember I did a story on the watch this maybe a year or so ago where there's something that's implanted and they do something with this guy's spine, and next you know he's standing up and he's beginning to tell these things to move his legs. Amazing. And as we mm-hmm. get better at this, it may even get may more and more smooth. So with this, right. I understand that as well too. But bro, yeah, it's Elon Musk. Exactly. Well, that I mean, that is the whole thing about this story for me is bro, it's Elon Musk. Like that's the ultimate takeaway for this whole because like I'm a big science fiction guy or whatever, and I love like tech and a vacuum and and advancements and that sort of thing. And like, yes, if it could actually like I had a, I had an uncle when I was a kid who had ALS. It was you know brutal. It's a terrible thing. If they if this device can actually like help people with those disorders. Then, you know, obviously that's awesome on its own, but not even just that. The other stuff too, I'm down for like in a vacuum. I like the idea of having like a heads up display and like got that Terminator vision, except not all red, where you can like look around and, you know, you get a weather report or a GPS thing, or you could call up and order a pizza with just your thoughts or whatever. Like that, I, that stuff's all cool to me. But dude, not from Elon Musk though, not after the last like five years. Like I'd I'd rather I'd almost rather get a brain implant from like the Paul brothers, Jack and Logan Paul <laughs> than than Elon Musk at, at this point. He's just shattered all any kind of like goodwill that he had from my perspective, but he's still got his legions of cultish followers. So I'm not surprised he has people lining up to do this. But yeah, the technology by itself. I think they should keep working on, and I think it's got some cool possibilities to it. But like coming from us specifically, no, thank you. I, I will pass. That's a hard. Imagine pass. the release form that you'd have to uh, sign before you go into these trials. I had to sign a release, a release form once when I went and did whitewater rafting, and it's the first time I've signed something that said, "Yo, there's a good chance you're gonna die today, right? And if you do, your friends, family, whoever else, they can't come for us." Um, yeah, so, was it fun though? It was. It was. 
fabulous. It yeah, was fun. Sure. I made it. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, I heard five different ways that I can die so that I can avoid it as I yeah. was doing it. And then once I survived and made it mm-hmm. out, I said, okay, made it. Great time. Never doing that again. Yeah. Haven't done it things like that. In fact, I did it with several TYT folks. We had a trip out there. It was, it was quite fun. Uh, so let's get to the actual reasons why that I said, but it's Elon Musk, bro. And specifically when it comes to this Neuralink, because Again, these are supposed to be trials on humans, which means he's already tried this on other things like monkeys. So uh, no people have had these implants, as I pointed out, but they've done 155 implantation surgeries using the robot on a variety of animal test subjects, pigs and monkeys to be more specific. Here's one of the headlines from when those trials were happening. Um, And it says, here are the details of the grisly deaths of Elon Musk's Neuralink monkeys. Elon Musk denied claims that Neuralink's monkey test subjects died as a result of its brain implants. But Wired points out some documents that suggest otherwise. Again, that's from The Verge uh, uh, publication there, pointing this out. Here are some of Musk's claims. Wired uh, notes a December 2019 experiment outlined in one of the documents saying one monkey had to be euthanized after a piece of Neuralink's brain implant broke off during the surgical process, leading to an infection. Another uh, Macaque, macaque uh, mentioned, known as Animal 15, began to press her head against the floor for no apparent reason, days after receiving the implant. And her condition only went downhill from there. Horrible. And how about Animal 15, that same one that had her head in the floor? Animal 15 began to lose coordination, and staff observed that she would shake uncontrollably when she saw lab workers. Her condition deteriorated for months until the staff finally euthanized her. Uh, a necropsy report, uh, necropsy report uh, indicates that she had been bleeding in her brain and that the Neuralink implants left parts of her cerebral cortex focally tattered. She was destroyed. Her brain was destroyed. Internal bleeding. Um, who knows why specifically she reacted that way when uh, lab workers came? Maybe because some part of her brain, remember, that's who did this to her. I don't know. But I, I thought there was more protections even around animal uh, trials and and tests. Even when people have lipsticks and makeup, they go, "This has not been tested and and tried on animals," but they have to try some other way. I don't know how then this has gone from that. What Elon Musk and Neuralink has has uh, has convinced authorities of to allow them to then go to this next step. But bro, I I have a, a, a semi new Bronco, the little one. Mm-hmm. And I say already now, I was like, I should have waited a couple of years, maybe the secondary generation. Uh, right. Because there's always issues with the first ones. Apps always, yeah. You're never like a, a principal adopter of any kind of new technology because it's never the best version of it. And something like this, you need to wait years. But also like, we need some actual regulations and stuff in place for these types of technologies going forward. That also needs mm-hmm. to happen because it's like, dude, we all just like going to sign up for like putting ourselves on a network connected directly to our brain where it's like, you know what I mean? People are worried about their data from their phone and everything and privacy. You're going to have like like your wavelengths on there. People are going to be trepidatious and I don't, and I don't blame them, but, but I still think people should continue to work on it and that the possibilities are pretty cool eventually, but not yet. And not from Elon Musk. (laughs) Two things. Uh, I grew up in the church. We always heard about the mark of the beast. Mm-hmm. The mark of the beast, the mark of the beast. This could be the mark of the beast, the one that implants the thing in your brain and lets them to control whatever the hell else you want to think, do, and even say. Uh, right, and since we're talking yeah. religion, Speaker Mike Johnson, he's going to have a whole new way to communicate with his son over their porn activity. <laughs> right. All they yeah. have to do is think about he, it. I'm about to say, yeah, that, yeah. now he don't even have to like Google something or look it up on YouPort. He could just think <laughs> dirty thoughts and his dad <laughs> finds out. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.